that's why I keep telling people, please, for God's sake, don't kill us. Stop kneeling down to talk to us. We are not God. In our culture, you kneel down to greet people. Yes, kneel down and stand up. But why would you kneel down and be speaking to a fellow human being? And you remain on your knees and you are speaking to a fellow human being whose, nose, whose breath is in his nostrils, who can go to bed and not wake up, who can give an appointment for 11 o'clock and quarter to 11 is dead. Don't worship us. Many church members are killing their pastors. Stop worshipping your pastors. <laughs> Greet them and stand up and speak to them. We are fellow human beings. We were taken from among you. These puppets can kill. You can finish committing adultery and still come back and fire is coming out of your mouth. I don't respect your charisma. I prefer character. We cannot afford to mess up. Any pastor that sleeps with church member needs to visit the psychiatric hospital. It is a huge trust. Women, listen. Don't go to a church where you are abused. Where the pastor tells you he must sleep with you before he prophesies. When the pastor tells you, the Lord said to me, I should lie on you like Elijah laid on that child to prophesy. It is not right. Don't be gullible. It's a huge trust. One woman, she was so heartbroken and she broke my heart too. She came to the, to the pastor for counseling because her daughter was messing up and the pastor said, oh, let her come in. And she sat at the reception praying in tongues and believing God that God's word will hit that girl. And while she was praying, the pastor was sleeping with the girl. It is not right. God is watching. Payday is coming. He that sees in the secret, he knows how to reward people. I tell people regularly, don't be deceived by my jeans, or my trouser jeans. Don't be deceived by my makeup. I got born again 36 years ago. When it comes to spiritual things, my head is correct. Don't be deceived because you see lipstick. When it comes to the things of God, I know what I'm doing. All of us cannot remove earrings from our ears. All of us cannot wear tattoo neck. I've been there before. For 10 years, I didn't wear jewelry. No makeup, nothing. If you see my wedding picture, you will cry for my father. I got my, in, my dress from England, but in those days, you are enjoying now. You, your pastor's wife must inspect your wedding dress. So when my pastor's wife saw my wedding dress, she said, Sister Funke, you cannot wear this because souls are perishing. <laughs> As if souls have not been perishing before I was born. Our souls still not perishing. We still still not perish. So she now made me one cocoa sack. Pneumonia scarf veil. Can you imagine on my wedding day, no makeup, no pen? The first time I put on a tiny earring, my husband said to me, You look like a woman. And many homes are destroyed today, not because of the devil. You say, Satan, it is you. The devil says, I don't even know the address of your house. So for 10 years, it was a man that was married to a man. I dressed to please only three people on earth. The almighty God. Let God be pleased no matter who is offended. I dressed to please number two, my husband. And I dressed to please myself. Every other person is a noise of the markets. Noise of the markets. We cannot all put on scarf. When we get to heaven, if I need scarf, God will put it on my head. So don't judge me because I don't put on scarf. Go with you. That is why, Pastor Ekweme, the cross has four entrances. The cross, north, south, east, west. Now look at it. Come with scarf. Come without scarf. Come with makeup. Come without makeup. Just come to the cross. Just come to the cross. Did you die for me? Did you shed your blood for me? Why must you judge me? Do you know what I encountered before God today? With your scarf, you can still go to hell. With my makeup, I'm serving God. So please don't judge me. Let's drop our doctrines and come together and be one. Receive me as I am. So my master, I stand or I fall. I've been reading my Bible for many years. Genesis to Revelation. I can tell you 
I've only found three men that got there that got God friend. So, so, so it's not a prayer that is easy. If you see lately, before I go to bed, after I pray, I finish my prayers by two, three o'clock. I want to go to bed around three or four. I to short sleep, I, I check that thing called TikTok. And I've been seeing some crazy, crazy videos. Anoint my belly. Anoints me to my belly. Young boys call themselves apostles. You see, a young boy, they will be opening car for him. People will be opening door, you'll be coming down as an apostle. Small, small boys that destroying their lives. They turn Christianity to celebrity issue. Madness. Man insanity. I'm angry. Who taught you that nonsense? Where did you get that nonsense from? What nonsense? Only in Africa. Go and check. You won't find it in the Budo Yimbu. America. It's not there. African man, you guys don't get brain. What's up with you? You young boys just obey them. Your, your age is calling you slave. Are you, are you agreeing? Something is wrong with your brains. Those boys on campus, if you follow some people, you are wrong. You, you enter school to be a slave, then you are in the miss road. How can they send you to university to be a slave to your colleague? It's madness. Small, small boys, all. 22, 24. They'll be going for me, car. They'll borrow a car. And you see his mate opening the door. He said, Papa, Papa, I said, You mad? What's wrong here? Yeah. What? How did you get here? How did you get here? Madness, 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 raised the power, madness. That noise, my belly. One of them, I saw him. He, he was praying. He told him to record his prayer. He was going to do a crusade. I said, The man is insane. For nobody should get into my closet. Recording my conversation, my daddy. Enter your closet in private. Pray. Since when did we make? Pray, private prayer recording issue you don't, you, don't, you don't get it Christ said when you pray enter your closet have a secret place a secret place you don't have camera you, you, are, you are praying in secret you are turning to you to camera you show that you are faking it you are showing seriousness who are you deceiving tell me in your empty brain do you actually believe that you think God is answering that prayer? Our, my father. Are you, do you really think you are talking to him? Or you are faking your lifestyle to show you are a prayerful man? Jesus has got to be a prophet to the Seigneur Jesus. Pastor Julius Allen, please come to the podium. Pendant qu'on appelle vos noms, s'il vous plaît, venez sur le train. Please listen to this testimony. Écoutez ce témoignage. This is Pastor Julius Allen. He was sick. He had been out for three months. But I'm from now up to this morning. Our grandfather is around. Please, everybody, everybody, please go down on your knees. Go down on your knees, please, everybody. Go down on your knees. Pastor John Singh Suleiman is a Nigerian televangelist and the senior pastor. General Overseer of Omega Fire Ministries International, one of the fastest growing churches in Nigeria, with its headquarters in Auchi, Edo State. He started Omega Fire Ministries in 2004. He is happily married to Lizzie Johnson Suleiman, and their marriage is blessed with, with six children. He is a spiritual father to George Otoku. Ever since we came in contact with you, Papa, our ministry has experienced a great miraculous turnaround with a standing ovation. Let's make welcome our hero, our father, a man of impact, God's general, Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Somebody shout hallelujah.
I remember when we used to preach the materialistic gospel because it was about showmanship. How many of you know the materialistic gospel is about showmanship? You line up escort car, you line up pilot car, two, three cars, two, three cars, you are in the middle. And then sometimes the protocol will have to come out and be running with their legs and be running with their legs and you're inside the car and these are brethren in Christ. These are sons of God. See how they are running and they can even fall. And then you come out of the car like a superstar. We we'll bring out one leg first. You know, there's a, you, they have to learn it. You bring out one leg first. You stretch your head. Then the photographer will snap it so that they see the kind of car you're coming out from. Then you come down. Then they snap another one. They see the line of cars you are standing by. Then you take another step. And you put the legs in a way where the shoes can be captured. Because the shoe is part of the ministry. It's a total showmanship. That useless, useless, smelling gospel called prosperity gospel. Showmanship, oppressive, and fraudulent. Stop idolizing your pastor. Every man of God is also a man, right? It's just the spirit of the Lord that rests upon them that make them to be men of God. I'm not saying this to talk down on any man of God or to talk down on any pastor, any prophet, any apostle, but the fact still remains that Christians need to know that you should stop idolizing your pastor. A lot of time more people say oh um daddy say papa say mommy say i mean uh, what is the bible saying what is god himself saying but what is the bible saying about you not idolizing your pastors you dare to believe the man of god pastor chris dare to believe his words you know when we share things like this when we share fundamental truths of this nature, there are some skeptics and some critics who we're used to by now who think we're worshipping a man. The truth is, I wish I could worship him. I will pause and take that again. The truth is, I wish I could worship him. You see? Go back to the better for you. Because he is worshipable. <laughs> God have mercy upon us. <laughs> and I've told some of you this a lot of times. And I've said to our outreach pastor, when I walk into a place I'm hearing, let's say our father is here, it irritates me, Dr. Chidi. It irritates me. It's like they are killing me. Our father, let's appreciate our father. Don't appreciate me. Don't appreciate who am I? I'm not saying this in a space just trying to be humble. I'm saying it because that's what it is. When man steps in, God steps out. You must be extremely careful to give God what is due him. I get to, and I've told them several times, stop. You are killing me. It's me you are killing. When I walk in, keep quiet. I'm like every other person. Let him honor me. Let what he will do honor his grace on my life. He must increase. So when I see all the testimony, we want to celebrate the grace of God upon our Father. I understand you honor, but you must be careful so that man does not become God. You must be careful to know when to draw the line. Am I speaking to somebody right now? Our Father, while we are praying, our Father just walking. What is that nonsense? We are praying, our Father just walking. That's, that's not honor. That's murder. That's murder. And that's high service. Because most people say, Father, just walked in and not really sons or daughters by their character. If you honor your father, you will protect his life. Even if he likes it and you know it will kill him, you will not bring it near him. There are some things my wife will tell me. Sir, if I'm in the flesh, we will quarrel. But she will tell me, if you are arrogant, you'll be saying, Why? No, I'm quiet. Because she's saying what will help me. Many, sometimes you see me walking, your mama is talking to me. You know what she's telling me? Why are you late? 
You have not been a good example. Why are you late? And I'm sorry, sorry. She's not happy. I'm saying it. Why are you just coming now? I said I was praying for some. Can't you pray later? You know, some of you will say, what, 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 what? that has become a quarrel. That that minor. You are so petty. Who gave you wife? Who gave you wife? Petty men can't make good husbands. Petty men, petty, petty, petty. Petty men can't make good husbands. Little thing, you see the reason. This one, you read mini. That one, you read mini. Your wife talk, you read mini. Ah ah. Nobody should talk to you in your life. I know my wife is uncomfortable, sir. <laughs> I know she's uncomfortable. I'm saying this, but I've got to sometimes see us on the I'll say, it's okay. I'm here now. He said, but why are you late? Marry a woman that can ask you where are you coming from. Welcome back, child of God. New subscribers, thank you so much for joining me. Returning once, appreciate your support. Thank you so much and grateful. You guys have watched this video. When I say that some some of our brains need to be reset, somebody say, No, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Some group will say, No, you're insulting people. Some say, no, uh, they are brothers in Christ. It's honor. They are honoring their pastor. And uh, leave us alone to do our own thing the way we want to do it. Let's serve our pastor. Honor our pastor the way we, we wish. Because, yeah, because you don't have pastor to respect. That is why you are castigating those that are worshipping their pastors. That is why you are castigating those that are bowing down for their pastor. That is why you say, eh, eh, they are worshipping man. There is nothing like worship of man here. We are worshipping our God and honoring our pastor. You see, I watched the video. I feel like I wish I could worship Pastor Chris Oyakiromi. This one has video of his own. I just want to, I just touch it a little bit. I just feel like touching it. For you guys to see the level of evil or the, we are committing in the house of the lord in the name of honor and he's even there saying eh, 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 people and eh, we are we are we are eh, we are we are conversing with them and eh, we are conversing with them those that normally castigate people we are conversing with them i wish i could worship him first you should obey the man of god and you should believe in his word I wish I could worship him. This is Pastor Chris Akromi's past brother, Reverend Tom Akromi. Said that he wish he could worship Pastor Chris Akromi. It's well. May God show us mercy. And Pastor Chris did not address this. Instead of Pastor Chris to come out and say no, he's not supposed to worship me. This word is heavy. I can't take the place of Christ in your life. Anytime a man takes the place of Christ in the life of any man, that man is now, is now God to him. He is God. The other one is worshipping him as God. Because he's God. God. Christ has taken away, as in they have taken, they have taken Christ away and replaced, and, and replaced Christ with Oyakiromi. In the life of this Reverend Tom, because it's not the life of everybody. That is the version of Christianity we are practicing in our generation. That is the version of Christianity we introduce to ourselves. You guys watch the one of uh, Bishop David Oyerepo's son. This guy that normally imitates Oyerepo. That is the guy who he said that you should stop on worshipping your pastors. Look at somebody saying you should stop worshipping your pastors. Meanwhile, he is the head of the worship. He is the head of the pastor's worship. Now he has, he think he has make, he has gotten a lot of, a, a lot, a little money. So he don't want to worship again. His eyes are clear. I thank God for his life that his, his life, his, his mumu don't do. Look at powerful message he dropped here. Child of God. It's high time for us to drop this poverty mentality. Our problem is poverty. Hardship. Show me that billionaire that is worshiping these people. Nobody. I know that you should not respect them. Respect is different from worship. He can see, he can see what, he can, he heard what, uh, Reverend Funke said here. 
Reverend Funke is from Yoruba land. She's from Yoruba. She's a Yoruba woman. And she said, no, we don't portray and remain there. Once you want to, well, once you portray and remain there, it becomes worship. It's no longer greeting. It's not honor. I told you guys in the other video that the people that are doing this, they don't love the, they don't love the pastor. They are evil people. They are desperate people. They are selfish people. They are used and dump group of people. They are people that are looking for how to got what the pastor have and run away. They don't have the law. They don't love the man. You see anybody that is kneeling down, bending down, hansing up for pastors, lying down for pastors. My dear, that person did not love that pastor. What the look at the level of the person kneeling that down and look at the level of the pastor. Can that person kneel down to uh, kneel down and, and worship? For a pastor in the village, of course, no. They only look for pastors that has make name and money that has money, so that they can worship them and collect money from him. That's all. Their worship is all about what they will gain from the man of God and not what they will offer. They are selfish people. They are selfish people. For those that don't understand the genesis of this video, I will put the link on the description for YouTube. If you're on Facebook, please can you check the video? Pastor, Doctor, Apostle Johnson Suleiman went to Cameroon. Or oh, I will attach a clip of it here so that you understand what you are saying. Okay? He went to Cameroon for a program. And Pastor Kevin knelt down for him and remained there. And they were discussing. We also have a short clip of Apostle Joseph Suleiman's wife. A lady knelt down for her as she was entering the ministry uh, inside church. So the thing did not all go well with Nigerians. People began to talk. Not only Nigerians, Cameroonians, and many other, many people. So that is actually the genesis of this. This one now is part two. You can see in this part two, Apostle Joseph Suleiman, you can you hear this video, you heard it from him, where he said that nobody should worship him again. They should stop kneeling down for him. They irritate him. Now, my question is this, Apostle, according to you, he said that you don't like this kneeling down. Now, he said this, he made this video months ago. Now, sir, why do you now allow Pastor Kevin to kneel down for you? And you guys were there discussing. Meanwhile, service is on, they were discussing and laughing, service was on. And he knelt down there for you, sir. Why do you allow that guy to kneel down there for you? Kneel down for you. Meanwhile, you said that you don't want it to irritate you. But if you look at your facial expression there, you find out that it is not irritating you. You are laughing. You like it. You like it. We know very well, we know too well that people normally kneel down for you, Apostle. They normally kneel down for you and remain there. But when you say that you don't irritate you, or do you say this thing because uh, Pastor Pastor Okafor was there? Because Pastor Okafor, Reverend Okafor, Chid Okafor, was invited by Suleiman. So that was why, when he made this video. Were you actually saying this there because of uh, because of Chid Okafor, or do you? Have you decided in your heart not to allow human being to worship you, sir? This is human worship. It's not respect. You can respect people. Go your way. Greet them. You can kneel for them according to your culture. I'm not against that. You can lie that. You can portray it. You can do whatever. But there's no place in African country that says you should portray and remain there. Or you should kneel down and remain there. See, if there is, then rich people Worthy men supposed to be doing it. But if you look at this passion, this version they are practicing in the church, worthy people don't used to do that. Rich people in the church don't used to do that. It's only poor people. They normally portray and remain there for their pastor. It's only poor people. They normally say, my papa say, my papa say. My... They don't think of what God say again. It's only what... They... Now, let me now give you their testimonies. Eh... When I, my papa prophesied last Sunday 
God show me mercy. And uh, somebody gave me money at the course of the week. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have testimony. Uh, somebody gave me money at the course of the week. And uh, as our pastor, our papa prophesied last Sunday that somebody will favor you this week. I keep into the, into the, into the prophecy. And immediately on Monday, somebody dashed me money. Hey, I want to thank the God of this commission. <laughs> I want to appreciate the God of this commission. The God of their papa. That is the God that she is appreciating. You know? The God of this commission. The God is of the God of heaven. And you have to attach what their papa said. The papa that did the prophecy said, just bless everybody. He did not target. He, did not, he was not referring to you. He only said, it shall be well with you. As normal, how priests used to bless people. This one said, I key into it. They must fix their purpose said, in whatever they are doing in their ministry, in their lives. If their purpose said, is not there, the commentators will, will, will add it there for them in that testimony. Or else they will not allow you to give that testimony. I'm telling you guys, that is what they are doing now in Nigeria. These are all these big GOs, pastors, churches, where they normally say, my papa say, my papa say, I key into it. That is it. I don't just get it. Exodus 20, the Bible says, Thou shalt not serve any other God before me. We must say no to human worship. This thing is getting out of hand. Pastor, stop replacing your Christ in the life of your members. Stop it. Stop replacing Christ in the life of your members. Allow them to serve their God. Allow them to serve Jesus. Looking up to Jesus, the, honor, the author and the finishers of my faith. I'm not looking up to my pastor. And not say you should not respect people. Of course, you have to do that. As Christians, we are not meant to insult people. We can only address issue without attacking the, pe the person. But when you address issue, they will call it attack. They will call it a hate. They, they don't want anybody to correct them. That is the version of pastors we have today. Pastors full of pride. They will be moving in a cover. You can see that guy. You see this one. Huh? This one is trending last week. Oh. And this week as well. People are just dragging him, dragging him, dragging him. This is uh, Pastor Matthew. Pastor Matthew Oshomoro, I don't know how to pronounce the name, I'm sorry. He went to, you can see him with, uh, with the other pastor, Koza, Koza pastor. You can see how they show their wealth. <laughs> Recently, he came out and dragged the table, I mean, uh, for condemning prosperity gospel. See him here. You can see him with his uh, mansion. Uh -huh. <laughs> Who do this into my generation? We must say no to wickedness. What shall you profit you as a pastor? If you gain the whole world and lose your soul, what shall you give in exchange of your soul? What are you expecting from your master Jesus? At the end of this journey, what are you expecting? Are you expecting well done, my faithful servant? Or are you expecting go behind me? You workers of iniquity. You walk out of iniquity, go behind me. What are you expecting from your master? If you're expecting, well done, my faithful servant, then you have to stop this human worship. Don't allow people to worship you. Be humble. Jesus made himself of no, of no reputation. Why will somebody kneel down for me? Why will I allow somebody to kneel down for me? Why should I do that? There's, see, I have been praying this prayer and I will keep praying it. Father, any level that I know that I will forget you. Don't take me there. I don't need it. I don't need that level of in life that I will that will make me to look at the poor man and oppress him or oppress 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 anybody because I am now on top. Because this kind of this name there of a thing is actually woman. You are oppressing them. You are oppressing them because for your mind, you are God is have taken you up. You are up. You have to op oppress them. By allowing them to worship you. No, 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 they are not worshipping me. They are worshipping you, sir. If you don't understand that, this thing, you better understand it now. They are worshipping you, sir. So repent, pastors. Thank you guys for listening. I want to hear from you. Please, what is your opinion? Are you in a church where you guys used to worship your pastor? Or in a, in a place where your pastor points you to Christ? Is your pastor pointing you to himself 
or pointing you to Christ. Our pastors are pointing us, pointing men to themselves. By preaching prosperity gospel, making people to see them as their God. The God that can create everything for them, make them billionaires. If you sow into my life, you become overnight billionaire. Yes, you are God. That is where this thing comes from. This, that is where this worship comes from. Since this man can make me billionaire, a poor man will not do anything to worship you. To worship that pastor. Because poor man don't want to remain poor. Of course he wants to be a billionaire. He will worship the pastor. If he don't have money to give to the pastor, he will go and do this woman worship. He will worship with his body, his face, his body everywhere. Everything around him will be to worship this man that can make him billionaire. Because the problem of a poor man is how he can come out from that poverty. That is just where this thing comes from. So it's well, oh, I want to appreciate the speakers. Don't forget, we're not here to defend their characters. This video did not target to defend their characters. It's under fair use. So credit to the source. We're only looking at this issue of kneeling down for pastor. Is it Babarika? Is that what, is it what did Jesus say? We must practice what Christ practiced. We must practice what the disciples practice. If we are preaching this Jesus, let's practice Jesus. Jesus is humility. He has humility in him. Christ is humble. He had compassion on the poor. Bible said that when he saw them, he had compassion on the poor. He did not ask them to kneel down for him. He did not ask them to bend down for him. He did not ask them to lie down for him. No. Bible said he had compassion on them. When you have compassion on a man, you will not allow that man to worship you. No. Your compassionate heart is just about how I can lift this man. How I can make him something. How can I can bring him out from that cave. How I can make her to come out from that hardship. But your own, you are taking advantage of that uh, her situation. By allowing her to worship you. By allowing her to burn that for you. By allowing her to remain on that, in that, on that ground in the name of worshiping you, sir. Repent, there is heaven. There is God. Repent. Don't replace Christ in the life of men that he died for. He don't die for men. Christ died for them. He paid, he bought them with his blood. You don't replace yourself there because you don't pay for your you don't pay for them. No, he did not bought this man, he did not bought these souls. Christ bought them with great price. He did not. So don't replace don't replace the owner. Don't replace the owner by allowing them to worship you. Allow them to worship their God. Exodus 20 said, Thou shalt not serve any other God before me. Why then did your pastor turn to God in your life? See you guys next time. Please let's repent and serve this God. If you don't want to preach Christ, pastor, please kindly drop that mic. Go. We, God has substitute. Okay? Don't think that without me serving this God, without me working for God, nobody else will do. Mm -mm. Our God has substitute. So if you are not ready to serve God, please kindly drop this mic and find your way. There are a lot of things you can do after you, uh, there are a lot of work out there. There are people that really want to serve God and practice Jesus. Serve him. So that Christianity will not be a thing of mockery in the eyes of men. See you guys next time. Sharon.